Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this demo. A big shout out to Wacom, Amber, and Joe for getting me to GDC to demo this live. Hope you all like this video. I'm going to be showing you uh, as many tricks as possible for creating content in ZBrush. Let's get started. Alright, I'm starting with the basic sphere in ZBrush. I usually open Lightbox and grab one of the DynaWax meshes just because I like the interface. It's already set up. The camera looks pretty cool, so I usually use that. I'm just masking out areas. I kind of have an idea of what I want to do, so I'm just kind of figuring that out now. I like to immediately place markers for myself so I know where things are going to be placed. So that's why I sculpted out those eye shapes really quick, because I needed everything else to kind of follow that direction. Quickly sculpted in a mouth, very roughly. I'm not too worried about geometry or dynameshing anything right now. I just want to get in as many shapes as I can so I can so I can stay motivated and excited about my concept. I'm just exploring shapes right now. I use the clay buildup brush because it gives you a lot of happy mistakes similar to a grain in a pencil strokes. Whenever I sculpt in eyes I try to add uh, zygomatic shapes underneath the eyes to kind of uh, remind me that I need to create some kind of skeleton underneath this. So, because I've sculpted so much, I needed to fix the geometry, so I duplicated my mesh, dynameshed it, and uh, am projecting the detail from the previous mesh back onto it. And then I delete the old mesh, because uh, I don't need it anymore. So now I have clean, fresh geometry. There was no detail to begin with, so it's okay to start off like this. Uh, what I just did is I stored a morph target. When you do that, um, any additional changes that you make to your mesh, um, you can separate it into a separate subtool. Just don't dynamesh, don't do anything crazy, just sculpt. Don't do anything else to it. And you see I hit create difference. It creates a separate tool. You just hit insert and you can bring in that other piece of geometry that you sculpted. And then you can delete your morph target or, or switch back. You'll see a switch button also to go back to how the mesh looked before you created uh, those shapes. Just adding some hard surface shapes. Again, just exploring what this guy is going to be. I usually, I just keep sculpting until I find like a bit of a motif. So right now he's looking a little like cute but mischievous at the same time. So I'm, I kind of got that in the back of my head while I'm sculpting. And whenever areas look kind of plain and boring, I try to sculpt them out and try to bring out shapes because it could influence the design. I use the move tool quite a bit. I'll use it a lot, especially in this demo, to constantly change the silhouette. I'm usually rotating my model quite a bit, and when I'm doing that, I'm looking at the overall shapes that I'm seeing, because the silhouette needs to be very strong. So I kind of have a custom brush. All it is is a simple standard brush with a lazy mouse, and I drag it to create those little lines that help emphasize certain areas like it could be hard surface planes that I'm trying to bring out or I'm just cutting into the mesh for additional detail. Uh, so I insert eyes, I insert sphere and split mass so I can separate them. Uh, after I do that I duplicate it, uh, duplicate the eyes that is, uh, then inflate the duplication so that way I can carve into them and create uh, eyelids quickly. I highly recommend using uh, the insert mesh brushes. Uh, you can get a lot for little. So these are default ZBrush um, meshes here. I'm using them kind of as a base for some spikes I'm going to put on. I chose a sphere that was a part of my tool list and I uh, hit make poly mesh 3D. I just clicked on the wrong mesh, that's why I had trouble there. Now I'm just going to make a little spike so that way um, I can turn it into an insert mesh brush so that way I can drag it onto the creature's back. So a lot of detail, a lot of work. Well that's what it's going to look like but in reality I'm just going to sculpt one roughly and it'll look like I did a lot of work. Uh, 
I definitely encourage all of you to browse uh, ZBrush's interface because there's quite a bit of tools that are very, um, very useful and could definitely uh, speed things up. Everyone sculpts differently, but a lot of people use the same tools. Every now and then you'll, you'll discover something small. So I'm uh, decimating this guy. So Z plugin, pre-process, and then when it's done, I decimate it. Because I want it to be fairly low res, so when I start dragging it on to my other mesh, it won't be uh, super dense. When you create an insert mesh, it's based on your camera, camera view. So I'm recreating it, create insert mesh, and when I go back, it should uh, drag on correctly. See that? So when you drag them out, if you kind of move your mouse a little bit, you can make them thick and thin. Uh, so that's what I was doing to vary them up a little bit. And I separated them so that way I wouldn't get in the way of my sculpting on the body. So I know he needs legs. He needs something. So I'm going to try the morph target thing again. So I'm going to store morph target and uh, use a snake hook tool, which I use quite a bit and drag out some quick legs. There's plenty of ways to do this. You can just create one leg and then repeat it throughout the mesh, but because I'm sculpting and I, and I still don't know what I want to do, uh, I'm just going to drag out shapes. So I hit create difference and I hit switch also, so that way um, the mesh went back to the way it was before I sculpted on it and it separated the geometry for me. Then I went to insert and inserted the geometry. So I cut the uh, tips off of the feet because I wanted it to all be on the same plane on the floor there. I always check to make sure that the anatomy makes sense. Uh, I know these are creatures but it's important that visually it's understandable. And you notice I go back to different areas. Sometimes I'll work an area just really quick and then and leave it and come back later. It's because I, I want to stay excited about what I'm working on so that's why I jump around quite a bit because working on one area may inspire me to do something to another area. This is my trim dynamic brush. I know there's damn standard uh, I think it's called but uh, I don't use it. I've, I've always used uh, trim dynamic. Polygroups, very useful. You can select areas very quickly. So that way they're uh, untouched while you modify areas. Yeah, I just thought the face wasn't dynamic enough. There weren't enough shadows. Uh, big tip, something that I learned from work from some very talented artists, is uh, as you rotate your material, you notice the very uh, dark areas that are pretty much black. Um, those are things that are going to read immediately whenever there's a, a new light source. So as I'm sculpting, I make sure that those read. Um, it's the equivalent of having a thick to thin lines while you draw. So if those read, then um, you know you're you're doing the right thing. Losing control of these teeth. Going to clean them up a little bit. Uh, with teeth. For sketches like this, I'll just drag them out like I showed you with the uh, morph target. Uh, sometimes I'll bring in uh, some preset teeth that I have, just normal human teeth and gums, and I'll place those and manipulate those. But for this stuff, I mean, I really want to just maintain the momentum I have and, and sculpt away. I don't want to stop for anything. Uh, when I started in ZBrush, I started out with just sculpting heads. After that, I went into sculpting the top half of the body, and then after that, uh, the arms. I just kind of broke it up into different days, different exercises, um, because in the beginning I wanted to sculpt full characters, but I would just get kind of discouraged because it was so it was so much work, and um, I would just lose interest, and that prevented me from finishing anything. But after practicing individual sections of a concept, I guess I trained my brain to know what shapes needed to be there and how to do it in ZBrush. Uh, so eventually I got much faster and it wasn't an issue anymore. 
Also, through practicing uh, in ZBrush, you'll kind of remember what you can do in ZBrush to make things look more finished with very simple brush strokes. Like you'll see that I, I just push and pull shapes to make it look like I did more than I actually did. So sometimes uh, when I'm working on creatures that have kind of gnarly legs like this guy um, should have, I'll uh, create one leg with symmetry turned on in the center of the uh, scene and really flesh it out because again it's symmetrical and then uh, once it's pretty fleshed out what I'll do is I'll duplicate it and move it off to the right side of the creature you know as his first arm and then uh, duplicate it mirror it over and just keep doing that and it looks like you have a lot of uh, work done when in reality you just worked on one leg so see how I just pulled out those points on the uh, on the front of the leg there Again, it's a sketch. It's the equivalent of just a quick uh, brush stroke. See what I'm doing with the edges? I like to emphasize them with that uh, brush with the lazy mouse. It's just something I picked up. It's kind of like outlining, I guess. I feel like it makes it look like it's more hard surface than it is. So those legs need to connect somewhere on the, uh, on the body. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. These two legs, I, I got to separate them because them being uh, welded together is going to be a problem. Also, I'm realizing that I could just sculpt one of these legs out, um, like I mentioned earlier, and just duplicate them and move them. Uh, so I'm going to fix the geometry uh, using inflate brush because the uh, geometry is uh, too flat, close together. So whenever I delete geometry and need a hard edge, what I'll do uh, is use slice curve and slice off whatever I need. What will happen is it'll create a sharp polygroup. Um, I'll hide the polygroup that I don't want, delete hidden, and then I'll use close holes to, um, to close the holes. <laughs> I prefer it over clip curve because clip curve can sometimes just flatten out the polys or points and rotate your mesh you'll notice it's just a flat plane and then you have to get rid of that and it's just it's it's a huge mess but clip curve it is pretty useful sometimes so if I would have done uh, what I mentioned earlier just created one leg and detailed it out and duplicated it uh, I wouldn't have to do what I'm doing right now which is uh, doing twice the work because it's not symmetrical the leg detail is going to be symmetrical, so it's it's twice the work pretty much because I have to mirror everything over. I forgot to split this uh, geometry from the back. So see, I just moved away from the legs because I, I kind of needed a break from it. Uh, I'm kind of in, uh, in a good rhythm now, so I'm using my trim dynamic to kind of create some uh, hard shapes, and I'm using my uh, little custom lazy mouse brush to emphasize uh, some forms. So I'll do this a lot, because I feel like it reads automatically as something that's hard surface, like it's a solid plane, but in reality it's just organic planes. Back to the leg. See, just using a snake hook to pull out shapes. One thing I recommend that anyone using ZBrush practicing notice, actually notice that I just saved. Uh, I do that quite a bit. I won't save for the longest time because I don't save unless I'm happy with something. Usually, uh, sometimes I just forget to save and I crash, uh, crash ZBrush and have to redo it. Uh, that's part of the reason why I got a lot a lot faster it's because it kept crashing what I was saying uh, before is I recommend everyone practice working on subtlety like if you look at the ZBrush artists that you admire now you'll notice that in their design uh, they have big shapes that read easily and in their detail it's very subtle it's strong but very subtle uh, to the point where it's more of a, a third read or fourth read you recognize the big shapes first and everything else is kind of a uh, last 
So see this? I have all my big shapes there, kind of deltoid bicep kind of thing going on, and everything else is just the fun stuff, the fun little detail stuff. Uh, clay buildup. Uh, I also use the uh, square alpha that it comes with. It just gives you so many awesome little, uh, little awesome mistakes that, that really help uh, flesh out a concept. Now, when sculpting this, I'm also thinking about reference that I've seen before, like a king crab is something that I thought of while I was doing this. How they had those sharp little points everywhere, and, and so I just, you know, went with it. Uh, it's very important to look at reference. The more reference you look at, the more you study your reference, the more your uh, visual and mental library will develop. So when you have to do kind of concepts straight out of your head, when you start just sculpting uh, randomly, uh, you'll start to see things that look familiar, and you'll try to interpret that along with other reference that you've seen in the past, and you'll create something that's a lot of fun. If you don't look at reference often, and uh, you kind of just reference other people's artwork, um, you're just going to end up copying other people's artwork because that's all you've seen. So definitely uh, check out reference. Something reminds you of something, look up that uh, image and see what it looks like. You don't have to stare at it for like an hour. Just, you know, check it out. See what forms you can um, incorporate into your design. So adding some gums for the teeth, emphasizing them a bit more. The detail, notice that I... Uh, kind of ma manually adding the detail rather than grabbing like an alpha or something like that. Um, I'll do that a lot for my sketches. I'll just use whatever ZBrush has. I don't go too crazy with bringing in alphas and whatnot. Uh, I guess I should, but it's just not how I was taught. So I feel like the top of the head is a different, meant to be a different material than the, uh, the bottom half, because the bottom half feels more like flesh, obviously. So I want to kind of separate the head from the body in a way with shapes. And again, thinking about that king crab, adding some consistency in uh, shapes and forms. So I have spikes everywhere, all this nasty, gnarly stuff. Even in the front, just everywhere. And that's what's fun is whenever you look at your concept, just make sure you're doing things that uh, make all the shapes consistent. See, I'm constantly rotating, looking at the silhouette. How could it improve? I know this is an issue here, how the uh, legs connect to the body. So I'm going to have to address that. Yeah, I didn't like just manually sculpting in there. I thought it was just too vague. So I see little shapes and kind of like the grain of my brush. I love emphasizing that stuff. Our front legs, uh, there definitely has to be something different about staying uh, consistent with the design, but I need to do a little something to kind of separate them to make it clear that the front legs uh, have, serve a different purpose or um, you know the, the anatomy of it is, is different. See, I kind of get rid of uh, the straight lines. I'm just breaking up uh, as many smooth surfaces as I can, just to make everything look a little uh, busy. And notice, uh, I really don't use any crazy brushes. It's kind of all the same thing, just over and over. Slightly modified, maybe, but pretty much same brushes over and over. Uh, all together, I think this took me about 50 or 60 minutes. I mean, sometimes uh, it'll, it'll take me a little bit longer to do, do these sketches. Uh, it really depends on the idea. Again, so adding some consistency, uh, bringing in these, uh, these guys as kind of a base. Maybe um, this body that it's in serves as some kind of shell. So kind of maybe it's like some metal shell or something like that, or man-made shell, and, and these are, I guess, the sleeves of that shell. So transparency is in the bottom right there next to a ghost, 
and polyframe. It's pretty useful if you need to uh, add something underneath a piece of geometry and or behind a piece of geometry and you gotta you gotta make everything else kind of go away for a second. So I need to make space for the uh, joints there. So that's why I sculpted that really quick. I can't emphasize enough that it's really important that you look at reference and study your reference. If you copy your reference uh, through sketches, that's great. Even having it with you is cool. Um, usually I'll just kind of look at it for a little while and then take some of the first impressions I got from the reference and include it in whatever I'm working on. Because it's the first impressions that, that, in my opinion, what really matter when you look at reference and apply them to creatures. And also while you're sculpting, try to uh, think of what material something could be. If it's kind of a shell quality or if it's organic and fleshy, definitely things you want to think about. And add a uh, structure to it, like a skeleton or something like that, so it looks like it can function in reality. I change the materials pretty often. Uh, that's something I learned also from uh, some, some really talented artists. So you can check to see how it looks with different materials and make sure your sculpture looks good with different uh, lighting situations. I uh, highly recommend doing that. It definitely helps a lot. So what I used is in Z plugin there's a, a transpose master. When you hit the first button, T-Pose, uh, it combines your mesh, the lowest resolutions of your mesh, and sends it to a new scene uh, completely combined. Um, so you can manipulate it, and when you hit the uh, T-Pose button after that, it'll send everything back to the original scene completely separated and puts it back at its highest resolution. It's a great way to uh, modify silhouettes and whatnot. So again, changing materials. These are some custom materials I got from uh, some coworkers and friends that I really love. They uh, like this particular one that I have on is great for uh, just trying to sculpt as much uh, detail as you want because it shows you everything. Putting in a little plane here just just for fun. I'm definitely liking uh, the way it looks. So I choose a white material with, that's top lit and turn on posterize, and I kind of check check out my uh, my design using that so to see what simple shapes read if everything's right so see there's dark strokes light strokes I want to make sure my viewers eye is going to a specific area and I like it so that's it thanks for checking out this demo if you have any questions feel free to email me again thank you to Wacom and everyone there for uh, letting me do this Take care.